strike report in? It's due any minute now, Art. Coffee? Yeah. Well, let's hope Colonel Brandon beat that storm front. Not likely. You just get the weather reports right, leave the flying dust, Jacoby. Anyway, there's always a secondary target. No, sir. That'll be sucked in, too. Well, that's bad luck. Major Varga, the strike report is coming in. Greg's luck is bound to get better. You think he should have asked for a stand down today, don't you? I think he'll get them back safely. Eddie. Radio man, what's Colonel Brandon saying to us? He says our number three wingman is out of position, Captain Douglas. Archer. Damn! Why'd I have to get stuck with all the boneheaded schoolboy replacements? You're over controlling the damn ship, Archer. Take over, kid. The hell you are. Red three from Red Leader. Close up. Red three, this is Red Leader. Get that junk into formation. Red Leader from Red Three. I hear you, Captain. Red Flight, get off the air immediately. Resume radio silence. Pilot to top turret. Keep your eye on that straggler. Report his position every five minutes. Sure. 
And he's got a Spitfire Escort. Top turret to pilot. Lieutenant Archer's catching up, sir. It looks like he had some help. I said thanks. Now move off my wing. Making you nervous, sir? Dear me. How's that? Comfy now? Waste gunner, get a picture of that insolent bastard. Roger, Colonel. Splendid aircraft, the B-17. But you have no idea what lovely huge targets they make, especially in daylight. Well, DDFN, Oh, that means, ta-da for now. The minute we land, I want that film developed and that pilot identified. I'm logging a protest with the RAF. He saved one of our groups, sir. I'll mention it to his commanding officer. Commander Howard, report to me immediately when he lands. Seventeen. Eighteen. The full group, Major. Wounded aboard. New pilots, Lieutenant Archer. Archer. Hospital. 
Nothing serious. A few glass splinters in his scalp. The minute he's released, have him report to me. Oh, sir. I've been awake all morning. He's pretty badly shaken up. Richmond, if you want the chaplain's job, apply for it in a proper manner. He's all heart, that guy. All heart. You're only responsible for guessing the weather, Myron. You should have finished divinity school, Deacon. Howard? Afternoon, groupie. You had us worried. Why it's not working? I thought it was. Didn't you get my report? No, we did not. However, the important thing is that you're back and uh, unscathed, apparently. Care for a spot? Thank you. I hope so. How many Jerry's you got now, Howard? Eighteen. Any today? One, assuming it's confirmed. Well, bung ho. Cheers. Uh, you consider yourself an experienced, skillful pilot, uh, wise to all the enemy's tricks and tactics. Well, if I'm not, I doubt I ever will be. Good. I admire an officer who has confidence in what he knows. Look, if something's wrong... What makes you think something's wrong, Howard? Uh, been up to some mischief you want to get off your chest? Oh, nothing you'd care to hear about. I'm relieved to hear it. Uh, because in spite of our past differences, I'd like your last fitness report to be a good one. <coughs> a drink, all right? Oh, fine, thank you. You're leaving us, Howard. Leaving? Yes, leaving. Today. May I ask where I'm being posted? Bombers. But I'm a fighter pilot. Yes, by your own modest admission, one of the best. That's why I chose you. And you have a way with Americans, I'm told. Americans? The 103rd Heavy Bombardment Group at Steeple Bassington, to be exact. You'll fill them in on enemy fighter tactics, sir. But you'll be interested to know that other RAF fighter pilots are being posted to American bomber groups. Sort of, uh, lend lease in reverse. Oh, look, you can't do it. I've done it, Wing Commander Howard. Your orders. A lot more will die before this ends. There was a time when you accepted that. I accepted the necessity. But watching him get knocked off day after day, I can't get used to that. Do they? No. No, they just get more scared and choked up. Nothing I do or say seems to make a damn bit of difference. Be patient. You and Clay Richmond. You'd have me warm in their bottles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Planning to keep me waiting all day, Colonel Brandon? I'm sorry, General Palmer. I was just about to tell. You've been taking a lot of losses lately, Greg. Too many. German fighter pilots are getting better. So is the Rackack. And you have to get better. General, I'll take any suggestions you have to offer. Cotton, I'm riding my flying crews as hard as I dare. They already think I'm a machine dedicated to killing every one of them. Matters to you what they think? Yes, sir, it does. There's always a chance they may be right. I don't like that kind of talk, Colonel. Wasn't that my job? Taking them out? Get them killed? You better get a hold of yourself, Greg. Let Varga lead the next few missions. That's an order. If you think I'm cracking up, Cotton, why don't you just go ahead and relieve me? Now don't push me. We're old friends. It'd be simple to cut you down and pretend it was best for you and the service. But it happens, Colonel Brandon, that right now you may be the most essential commander in the Air Corps. Staff's agreed to listen to your plan. Thousand plane raid over Germany in broad daylight. I thought that plan was buried. 
forgotten. And don't get your hopes up. Could be buried again. There's still a lot of opposition to long-range daylight bombing, especially from the British. Then why are they willing to listen? You'll know that this afternoon. You're coming to Pine Tree with me. You present your entire plan. Rendezvous tables, in-flight defense strategy, bomber tactics, the works. And you damn well better be convincing. It's that important to the war effort. Get into your pinks while I have a look around your station. Everything all right, Greg? Greg? Everything's just handsome, Gabby. Now, your main opposition will come from Conway. He's just gotten another star, made him a bit more cautious. But don't play to him directly. He knows all the conference room tricks. And whatever they throw at you, Greg, for God's sake, keep cool. You'd make a rotten briefing, Officer Cotton. You scare your men green. Ha! Now, this is Colonel Greg Brandon, 103rd Bomb Group. Some of you know him already. I've known him since 34. We flew the mail together. He was a young lieutenant with fresh ideas, strong opinions then. He hasn't changed. Sure. Colonel? With apologies to the British officers present, reconnaissance photographs show that on their nighttime bombing efforts, not one bomb in five fell within miles of its target. Now, look at you. Now, I don't mean to downgrade the British contribution to the air war. You pioneered most of the combat techniques in use today. But, gentlemen, the Luftwaffe couldn't terrorize London into submission. What makes us think the same tactics will make the Germans quit? Get your point, please, Colonel. It's just this, General Conway. Hit one of Germany's most important industrial targets. A massive daylight assault. A precision attack. Destroy it totally. The mount such an attack will require every B-17 in England. To be exact, gentlemen, 1,000 planes. I know your plan, Brandon. Now let's hear you defend it. I'll try, sir. Colonel, are you aware that the Luftwaffe is getting stronger every day? I have good reason to know that, sir. And you still suggest that we commit our entire frontline strength in one raid? Without the cover of darkness, a 1,000 planes would be a massive target for the Luftwaffe. We'll take losses, yes, sir. It would be mass suicide. And if Hitler launches his invasion across the channel, your scheme could leave us helpless to stop him. I wonder if the Colonel realizes that the losses he wants us to risk could very well be the turning point in this war. Our casualties will be high, yes, sir. But if we're successful, it will mean fewer men and planes lost in the future. We haven't enough anti-submarine bombers as it is, Colonel. Let up on the enemy submarine pens, and his wolf packs will strangle this island. We need bombers in the Pacific Theater also, Admiral. I hear Japan is plastering badly. You find that fact amusing, Colonel? What I'm trying to say, sir, we'll never have enough bombers or pilots to fly them. Not till the day this war is over. General Palmer says you have this scheme of yours all worked out. All right? Let's hear it. Yes, sir. The only elements missing from these plans are the two you gentlemen must supply. The date of the raid and the target. A strike of this magnitude will require a minimum of 30 fully operational airfields, plus an additional 30 airfields for the required British fighter support. <laughs> Let's go. 
Simply that I don't want to report to my news station before I've absolutely got to. Steeple Bassington. It's a Yank Air Base. That's right. I've been exiled by a jealous group commander. And simply because I was winning the air war single-handed. <laughs> oh, all right. Upstairs, end of the hall. Mind your loose tongue. Those are your new mates. Confusion to our enemies, gentlemen. Particularly and primarily to the hatchet man. To Brandon. Says Harvey, you have to drink of that. The curtain was certainly no enemy of yours. <laughs> all right, all right. Leave a kid alone now. What did I say? What did I say? Uh, you are disloyal, Quimby, and you are no gentleman. Now, personally, I purely admire a commanding officer who doesn't give a hoot in hell for the welfare of his men. Yeah, well, the Colonel stinks. Right, I'll drink to that. No, not so fast, Quimby. It is ungentlemanly for an officer to guzzle his brew. Not gentlemen, by the numbers. And a one, two, three. Not down. Mm. Uh, Let's take it again. Finish it off. One, and a two. All the way down. Three. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Estimated bomb ton if needed. 3,500 tons. Total fuel, 1,850,000 gallons minimum. 50 caliber ammunition, 5 million rounds. Oxygen. We'll study your logistics later, Colonel. Right now, I'd like to know how you plan to move 1,000 planes over a small target without taking half a day to do it. Instead of a single aiming point, General, there'll be three. Three waves coming in on three separate approach routes at staggered altitudes. Time spread over the target. Maximum, 60 minutes. What about collision risk? At rendezvous, collision due to pilot error will cost us 1% of our force. Navigational error, one half of 1%. Over the target, with enemy ak ak and fighter attacks, that's hard to tell. Uh, with staggered altitudes, what about the danger of the low waves running into your own bombs from above? If each wave crosses the target exactly on schedule, the risk would be infinitesimal. We're bound to have early crossings and late crossings. And more losses. Yes. Gentlemen, gentlemen. This schedule is only a reference, not a Bible. The strike commander will have to keep things sorted out over the target. That's a fearful responsibility, Colonel. Yes, sir, it is. Would you be prepared to take that responsibility? All right, leave your charts here, Colonel. Thank you for coming. Answer, Conway. You know the old army rule, Cotton. Never volunteer for anything. Have you lost confidence in your plan? Is there a flaw in it somewhere? No. Good. Because what I'm about to tell you is top secret. Now, the Falk Wolf fighter planes are made here, Marstenburg. Intelligence says that the enemy is preparing to disperse those factories to a half dozen different locations across Germany. We have got to destroy those plants before they can be scattered. Marstenburg? Well, it's too far and too heavily fortified. You might as well send us to Berlin. Staff wants Marstenburg. We have a couple of other plans. They'll hassle and stew over them a while. That's their job. But in the end, they'll decide on a single knockout punch. Then you don't believe they have another choice? 
I wish they had, Greg. Your plan scares the hell out of me. integrity of the squadron. You made a virtually helpless target out of your plane and your crew. Colonel, I admit I acted in panic, but it won't happen again, sir. That's not good enough, Lieutenant. Oh, I beg your pardon, Colonel. I'll wait outside till you're finished. You're new to this group, Lieutenant. So just this once, I'm going to listen to your excuse. It was an involuntary action, sir. I saw those enemy fighters coming and straight... And you panicked! Up. Hello? Uh, I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Your CO is tearing a strip off some defenseless little lieutenant. Is he always so iron-tailed? I'm sorry. We haven't been introduced, have we? Traft and Howard. My friends call me Traff. Wing Commander, Royal Air Force. Or I was, till yesterday, when I got sentenced to this nursery school. There's no telling what further punishment old Hardwick's gonna surprise me with. Demote me, probably. I say you're not very talkative, are you? You haven't stopped long enough to give me a chance. Confidentially. It's a tactic designed to keep your attention while you recover from what is undoubtedly a remarkably bad first impression of me. You uh, do take some getting used to. Marvelous. Truth and beauty. A rare combination. I didn't catch your name, love. Lieutenant Ames, sir. Lieutenant Ames. Imagine parents who choose a first name like Lieutenant for a pretty girl. I guess they knew a war was coming. Seriously. Military titles must only be used to catch drinks from civilians. Now, what's your first name? I'm bound to find out from somebody. Poor chap. I know exactly what he's going through. Getting ticked off is practically a daily ritual for me. Uh, wait for me. Excuse me, sir. Lieutenant Richmond said you wanted to look at these photographs. Thank you, Gabby. This is Wing Commander Howard, Colonel Brandon. I hope I didn't put you off your stroke, barging in while you were ripping the tail off that lieutenant. Excuse me, sir. You should have seen her face when you came out. Motherly type, no doubt about it. Tell me, is she somebody's personal preserve? Or can anybody have a go? Your orders, Wing Commander. You've been briefed? I've been told only that I'm supposed to familiarize your group with enemy fighter tactics. Planning some sort of show, Colonel. Something big, no doubt. You Americans have a fondness for things that are big. You'll be told when you need to know. Fair enough. Reporting for duty, sir. Well, you can start by getting me the name of one of your associates. A Royal Air Force pilot? I intend to lodge a complaint. What <laughs> for? Insolence, stupid, reckless. In I think it's really rather good of me, don't you? Report to my office in 10 minutes, Wing Commander. doesn't know a thing about enemy fighter tactics. Colonel Brandon. Nothing but a reckless Colonel Brandon, pilot. if you permit me, I dare say Wing Commander Howard knows more about enemy fighter tactics than the combined Allied chiefs. But I think you'll find that his irritating attitude is a small price to pay for such a knowledgeable officer. Thank you. Wing Commander Howard out there? Yes, sir. Send him in. Check with Lieutenant Ames. She'll assign you quarters, and once you're checked in, we'll discuss your new duties. Something wrong, Wing Commander? Uh, nothing, Colonel. I just thought my luck had finally changed. Shall we try for a new start, Howard? That's very sporting of you, Colonel Brandon, I'm sure.
everybody. Full flying gear. Flying gear? What the hell for? The fly inspection. What do you think? Uh, 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 I'll bump you, you motherfucker. Shut your face. Where's my shorts? Morning, brother. In hunt! Be seated. I'll make this short. After the last mission, you all must realize how miserably sloppy you were. Had the primary target been clear, a lot more than three enemy fighters would have jumped us. And a lot of you wouldn't be here now. A simple fact, gentlemen. The Germans are outflying us. Well, I know what you're thinking. Every bomber group takes its losses. And the 103rd is no exception. Well, I intended to be at an exception, gentlemen. After the last mission, it's obvious that uh, pep talks don't inspire you. What you need is more training. You'll start with the basics and go straight through the manual. Major Vargo will be in charge of your re-education. And it will continue until I am completely sure that you can handle any combat situation. As a personal matter, gentlemen, I take no pleasure in having to reteach you something you should have already learned. But learn it, you will. You miserable foul ups, do, huh? Nah, no matter what this crew did, it wouldn't be good enough. Ah, uh, don't let it bug you. Our time wasn't much better. I'll never be able to please that bastard. Who is the happy warrior? Who is he that every man in arms would wish to be? <laughs> hey, hey, you, I'm I'm right. Right. you poor abused colonial. That's right. 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 Knock it off, you guys. You got the inside track, Howard. When's Brandon gonna let up? Our leader hasn't seen fit to enlighten me. Until he does, your guess is as good as mine. Come on, Doug, let's have a pint, will you? Come on. How many ships can you get in the air tomorrow, Kruger? Full group, sir. Except this bird. You can't do the job, Sergeant. Sir, she's got more lice in her than a blind chicken. I got the engines all fixed and the controls go sour. I got the controls all fixed and the hydraulic Kruger. system parts. Yes, sir. Whatever it takes. Get that ship operational, okay? I'll do my best, Colonel.
Rainbow Leader, this is Red 3. Having control trouble. Do you read me? Having control trouble. Permission to return to base. Rainbow Leader to Red 3. Permission granted. I want you to check his controls. Report to me. Yes, sir. Debriefing reports on yesterday's mission. Question to Blue Leader Navigator. Why'd you miss the IP by full two minutes? Question to Green Three Leader. Why did your squadron fall behind over the target? Question to Red Leader. Captain Douglas. Yes, sir. The Air Corps provides hand extinguishers for cockpit fires, not flying jackets or blankets. I could go on. We all know where you were sloppy and where you were negligent. Oh, you found the target. You even did some damage to it. But don't expect any congratulations. You were barely adequate. Major? Danger! Report. Well, I wanted to reach Shack Lieutenant Archer's controls, sir. Well, there's nothing wrong with them. I'm riding Archer. He's a miserable pilot, a menace to his crew. You're destroying him. He's expendable. Everything I say or do to him makes an impression on the other pilots and crews. If they learn through his mistakes, at least he serves some purpose. Greg, what's happened to you? I'm just thinking what's ahead for a hell of a lot of men. Well, whatever it is, if you keep this up, they're not going to follow you. Gabby, I can't let up on them. I can't tell them what they're facing. I can't even tell you. You've told me in the one way that counts. You haven't really looked at me for weeks. I'm sorry, I just... It's just that we had something wonderful. Maybe when this is over, I... Now is when you need me, Greg. I love you. Ah. 
ask you to meet me here because of security, Greg. Is it on? Only Varga and that British liaison are cleared to know about this. Is it on, Cotton? Yes. They bought your thousand plan. I've been given overall command. You'll be strike command. Greg, if we can bring this off. Well, I thought you'd be jumping out from under your hat. You realize what a success will do for the war effort? What's eating you? This is your brainchild. You sold me, you sold Stat. Now you want out, is that it? There was a time when I was sure I want to lead a thousand planes. Greg, I need you on this raid. Nobody understands your bombing strategy as well as you do. Varga could. No. Like it or not, you're the key to our success. I don't like it. Are you sick, Greg? No, no. Are you refusing to accept the responsibility? Seems my men underestimated me. They didn't know how fast I'd kill them off if I had a chance. Are you refusing? When do we hit Marstenburg? On the 19th. That's less than three weeks. Now, how the hell are you going to get a thousand planes assembled, fitted, fueled, armed, and ready to go in less than three weeks? By telescoping your timetable, Colonel. No comment, Colonel. Keep it off the record? You don't want to hear it, believe me. The bars are down. Let's hear it, Trav. All right. It's murder. Deliberate, cold-blooded, criminal. I told the Colonel you wouldn't be too keen about his idea. Well, what sort of a reaction did he expect to a plan that's so desperate? The Royal Air Force has been to Marstenburg twice. Our losses were enormous. We know the history of British nighttime bombing. Well, then, if you've learned anything from it, at least make your raid a night operation. The decision's been made. A precision bombing attack in daylight on a strategic target with 1,000 planes. That's too big. You'll have no element of surprise. The Germans will get suspicious the minute you stop your regular bombing runs. We're not stopping our regular bombing runs. Why do you bother to tell me all this? Because you were sent here to teach my crews fighter defense. And I want your best guess on what fighter tactics the Luftwaffe will send at us. They'll come at you head on in waves of a dozen or more, because that's where your airplane is the most vulnerable, and the Germans damn well know it. Brandon, you can still stop this lunacy. As British liaison officer here, you're not required to accompany us on this mission, Wing Commander. Colonel, I'm going to wave goodbye to you from the ground. Take it easy, Trav. Well, taking risks is my business. But there's a hell of a difference between a calculated risk and certain disaster. Certainly doesn't pull his punches, does he? We asked for his opinion. and stuff, I'll bet. <laughs> yeah, you know what I think? I think somebody's flipped. I think the whole lousy quartermaster corps is dumping all the junk on us. No. It's the same at every airfield. One of the truck drivers told me. What do you suppose it means? It means we gotta fatten you little piggies up before we send you over to Shickle Gruber's market. Now get moving, soldiers. Uh, Come on. Uh, Move it over there. Move it over there. Anyone at home? 
Hello. Is the CO in? Colonel Brandon's on his way to Pine Tree again today. I can reach him if it's important, Queen Commander. No. Let's not disturb our leader while he's at the summit. When, uh... When do you expect him back? Oh, tonight. Late, probably. Why? Wakey, wakey! Rise and shine, you tosspot! Get out of here. And not before you explain this. Your request for transfer, Lieutenant. You get that. I must admit, it's one way of squeezing out of a cowardice charge. What should I do? Hold still while Brandon hangs me? Just between us, was there really anything the matter with your controls the other day? Yes. At least, I mean, I, I, I thought so. You mean you're not certain? Well, you're such a fireball. What do you do when you're a jinxed pilot? You can't be a jinxed pilot, Archer, because you're not even a pilot. I'm as good as any man in this outfit. Would you care to prove that to me? How can I? I've been grounded. You yanks. Always letting protocol stand in your way. There are bags of aeroplanes out there. Come on, let's borrow one. Commander Howard, Lieutenant Archer. Control tower. Eight five from control. Do you read me? Plane. It's no use. He must have switched off the radio. Never mind. It's too late. It's about to hit the fan. Wait till he finds out it's his plane.
Oh, would you mind telling me what the devil you were afraid of? Hello, Colonel. I thought you were on your way somewhere. I saw that plane being stunted. Lieutenant Archer. You're restricted to court as pending a court martial for insubordination. Colonel? Colonel, if there was any insubordination, it was on my part and quite unintentional. Lieutenant Archer was my guest, so to speak. Your guest wing commander? In my plane? Did you bother to remember that strike is less than a week away? No, I hadn't forgotten. And at a but... time when we need every plane that Colonel, can fly. Colonel, what good are planes without men to fly them? I took up a scared washout and I brought back a pilot and a man. Isn't that what you need most? Qualified pilots? If Archer were the last pilot on Earth, I wouldn't let him fly again. Parts list I gave you the other day. No parts available, Kruger. With the spec, Colonel. Just how am I supposed to keep this group up in the air? You'll manage. How? Every mission they come back chewed up worse than before. There are no parts to be had, Kruger. Why? Why all of a sudden is everything I need out of supply? Are you finished, Sergeant? No, sir. Will the Colonel kindly tell me how I'm supposed to keep this group flying? All right. Cannibalize a can do. Strip everything you need out of her for the other aircraft. Birdie, I'm gonna pluck out your lousy feathers. <laughs> hey, what the hell is Brandon up to, Howard? Now, we pulled eight missions without a foul up. Now, why is he still pushing so hard? Because you need it. Listen, I think if the crud's starting to hit the wall, we got a right to know about it. Yeah, well, I know. The Hatcher Man figured a way to totally demoralize the Luftwaffe. Yeah, how? By chopping off Herman Gorick. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I hear the ordnance section's preparing storage for 50 tons of incendiaries. 50? 50 tons. I'd be very cold. careful of that kind of loose talk if I were you, Jacoby. We have problems, gentlemen, in every phase of our preparations for Marstenburg, but there's one thing that stops us cold. Our losses on regular missions are going up every day. The Luftwaffe is getting sharper. They're penetrating our formations head on, almost at will. Does that mean you won't be able to put up a thousand planes for the big show, sir? No, it means that I can't accept the kind of losses that we can predict, sir. Colonel Brandon and I have been working on something that just might make the difference. Greg? I want two ships in each squadron altered according to these specs. They'll carry extra guns and ammo. But, sir, you, you're sacrificing the bomb load. That's right. The bomb load will vary from light to zero. The gunships will be strategically located in each squadron. A flying gunship? Destroy our escort principle. We hope to discourage head-on fighter attacks. Any comments, Wing Commander? I think that ought to give them a very nasty surprise. What were your orders, Sergeant? To have the full group operational by the 19th, sir. That's the day after tomorrow. Yes, sir. If the Germans didn't chew us up so fast, I might keep ahead. With respect, Colonel, if the 19th is so important, we should have had a stand down on that last mission. You're not my advisor, Sergeant. When you can handle your own job, I'll consider promoting you. Till then, keep your opinions to yourself. Yes, sir. Just get those ships ready. 
I'll try. That's not good enough. Do we understand each other, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Chief in the Air Corps. Don't you think you wrote him a bit hard? He had his orders. Kruger's one of the very few men left in this outfit who's on your side. I'm glad to know that, Lieutenant. Is there anything else, Lieutenant? Yes, sir, Colonel. You're a son of a bitch. Sir. I never really believed they'd order it. Order a standby alert, Major. Restrict all personnel to base. Germany calling. Germany calling. This is Lord Hawhaw. I have some very disturbing news for you flyers of the American Heavy Bombardment Forces. While I'm speaking to you, the teletypewriters are grinding out your orders for tomorrow. It's a big one, gentlemen. The strike you've all been trained so hard for. You're going to take part in an experiment. A 1,000 plane raid. Sounds full of glory, doesn't it? But what your officers won't tell you until the last moment, tomorrow morning, is your target. Of course, I could reveal it, but that would spoil the surprise and disappoint the Luftwaffe who are looking forward to the chance of shooting so many of you down. By the way, you men of the 103rd will be especially interested in this item. The author of this suicidal raid is your own commanding officer. What a pity none of you will be around to see him wearing the new star of a brigadier general. But at least you will have the satisfaction of knowing you bought it for him with your lives. I repeat, gentlemen, with your lives. This is Radio Berlin returning you to our regular broadcast of music. Of course I heard him. An operation of this magnitude is almost certain to spring a security leak. Well, if they know that much about the plan, they must know the target. If Lord Haw Haw knew, he'd have named it. Berlin's bluffing. Can we afford the risk? This is a hell of a time to be talking about risks. Your plan's a bloody juggernaut, Colonel. It's too big. It's moving too fast to be stopped by a little detail like a breach of security. Then it's set. The 103rd leads the show tomorrow. Vargas, your deputy strike commander. Wish us luck. I'm praying for more than that. So Brandon turns out to be the Judas goat leading us to slaughter. And hey Deacon, you're his buddy. Tell us why. I don't know. Triumph, you must have known about this all along. We British have been listening to Haw Haw's muck for some time. We've learned to pay no attention to him. this place down.
Debbie. Whatever I've done, I've never meant to hurt you. I... Please don't say any more. I'm here. There's so much pain everywhere. Maybe we can shut it out for a little while. This will be the worst raid we've ever had. Would it be that bad? Yep. Knowing that, why didn't you try to stop the raid? You ever try stopping a nightmare once it starts? You don't believe in your plan anymore. That's the hell of a Gabby. I do believe in it. Sooner or later, we have to go to Marstenburg. It's too soon and too far. That briefing tomorrow. How do I face him? Great, don't. Target, gentlemen. Marstenburg, where their fighters are built. We're gonna smash this facility with one massive blow. Pilots, navigators, and bombardiers will stay behind for special briefing. The rest of you are dismissed. Second off from Ridgewell, 36 aircraft. 351st off from Great Ashfield, 28 aircraft. 100th off from Thorpe Abbott, 32 aircraft. 402nd off from Kinbolt, 34 aircraft. Tail. Did anybody get out of that crash? Hard to tell, but it looks like some of them did.
You all right? I'm all right. Any other importance? No, sir. What happened, Colonel? Look like control trouble, Greg. If you had been stunting that ship, I'd still be in the air. I'm prepared to answer for that. Well, I'm going to make damn certain you do. Fine, but in the meantime, if you want to catch up with your men, I suggest you get cracking. What the hell are you talking about? Every B-17 in England is in that raid. Correction, Colonel. Everyone but the can-do. One hundred third off from Steeple Basington. Thirty-four aircraft. One aboard. 391st off from Polebrook. 36 aircraft. 384th off from Glepton. 29 General. aircraft. Colonel Brandon crashed on takeoff. 92nd off from Rattleston. But she'll still fly, won't she, Sergeant? Yes, sir, but she's been gutted. No backup system, no bomb racks, only a waste guns left. Excellent. The less weight, the faster we go. We? Well, you'll need somebody to drive the bus while you direct the traffic over the target. You'll need a co-pilot. And there's only me or Harvey Archer available. Get it, sir. You haven't got a crew. Or someone has to man those waste guns. Get in some flight gear, Kruger. Yes, sir. I said I'd never let Archer fly again. But if it's a choice between you or him... Captain. force has crossed the French coast. No German fighters as yet. The blue force has completed rendezvous over the North Sea and is heading for its approach. Rendezvous was right on the nose, sir. We had four collisions about what Colonel Brandon estimated. Is he all right? Yes, sir. I sent word for him to get right over here. Skipper? Well, I'm really quite a capable navigator. I think you can trust me to get you there, all right? I thought you said this mission was a suicide raid. Ah, yes. But that's no reason to miss all the fun, is it? Precisely your schedule, sir. It's a pity we haven't the flying range to cover the entire show.
next stop. Watch out for Jerry Fighters. Course correction, Skipper. Bandits! Bandits! It's the whole damn roof off of Colonel! Six minutes late. Third wave coming in nine minutes early. Daylight leader, daylight red leader. You're off schedule. Move in. Daylight blue leader, turn to new course. One, five, zero, and hold. Acknowledge. Daylight red leader. Roger. Daylight blue leader. Roger. The second wave has dropped. Results are good to excellent. We done it! That's Brandon got them sorted out, General.
us dead. Get Howard into a chute. You jump with him. Sir, in your hell hot hurry to leave, we forgot our chutes. Ship's losing altitude, fast. The Colonel's been hit and he's going down. Watch for chutes! Watch for parachutes! Come on, pull it out. Pull it out. Raise him on the radio. No answer. Well, the debriefing officers will be waiting, gentlemen. Let him wait. Lieutenant, you were given Captain. an order. May I borrow your glasses? Yes, sir. That's the channel down there, Colonel. Over, sir. Take your hands off, Archer. You've got about seven minutes worth of fuel, and you're off course, Colonel. Right now, I could fly circles around you. Don't you let up on me, Brandon, not even for a second. Oh, you bring this ship in, even if it kills us. Shot to hell. You'll have to belly land in the first pass, Colonel, because you got about zero fuel left. You never hit the runway. I can land this ship. A lesson from Howard, your flyer. Well, there's one quick way to find out, Colonel.
Get Howard. Greg? How'd we do, sir? Well, you were all wrong about your thousand plane raid, Colonel. Thank God our losses fell far short of your predictions. Target completely demolished. Just what the hell are you guys gawking at? Come on, the debriefing officers are waiting for us. Come on. After you, Colonel. <laughs> 